Hey guys, so today I would like to talk a little bit about what is often commonly referred to as our information diet. Uh, we see a lot of information on the internet and we find a lot of ways to organize that information. The one that I talk most about here on this channel is of course RSS. And my RSS use is pretty... Uh, pretty substantial. Uh, I have my reading material often on my phone's RSS reader, which is feeder from the F Droid store, and uh, most of my podcast stuff is uh, uh, accessed on my computer because usually when I'm playing games or when I'm working is when I'm listening to podcasts as well. So uh, it gives me a nice balance there, which has sort of crept up over time. Now, what I always find interesting about RSS is that it's it's really readily available. It's all over the place. Most websites have RSS syndication of some variety or another. But if you were to ask your average person on the street, they probably wouldn't have an RSS reader or even know what RSS even is or what it does. So I've always found it a little bit of a fascination there. And even though I found it really useful in keeping up to date with websites, particularly websites that only update maybe once every couple of months, but when they do, it's generally quite interesting content, uh, I found RSS readers to be rather invaluable for that. However, a couple of years ago, when Google retired Google Reader, which was by far and away the industry-leading RSS client, uh, a lot of people thought that this was like the final nail in the coffin for RSS. And... Whereas that isn't necessarily true. That's kind of like saying that there's, you know, it's a nail in the coffin for email, for example. Well, email will always be around because it's a federalized system that's reasonably standardized and works. And once once a system tends to hit those points, it tends to maintain a degree of usefulness, even if it isn't the primary mode of, of whatever it is that it's trying to do. Um, so, for example, even though more people might communicate through Facebook, email will still be like the de facto internet communication tool because it isn't owned by one company. It's a protocol. It's a standard. Um, and that's really a fundamental uh, ingredient of, of what makes up the internet, at least in my view, and RSS is part of that, is that... Um, is that RSS, it's easy to implement on the vast majority of websites and content management systems, um, and it's very standardized, there's very few things that really ever go wrong with it. Uh, it's not something that ever needs to be changed or improved. And anyone that's done any kind of website management or, or construction or whatever will know that it's significantly easier to update an RSS feed for your website than it is to, say, pass it to, to Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, I don't know. And all that kind of stuff, although it's not particularly difficult to do either. But um, but with Twitter, there are a few more steps, whereas uh, with RSS, it's just simply a matter of updating the, um, the RSS file. So um, it kind of got me thinking, though, um, even though like RSS is it's in a rather peculiar state because um, it's still readily available. Like Most websites will still support RSS and very few actually don't. It's only sort of one or two out of the hundreds of websites that I visit that, that don't. And Google Reader, although it went offline, there are a lot of people that went across to websites like Feedly or you know even people who use local clients. Although I've got to admit that there aren't really that many local clients that are um, sort of bursting with activity these days. There are a handful of decent RSS clients on Linux, but they're okay. They're standard. They just, they're part of the course. They do the job. And um, they tend to get updates, you know, once every couple of months, once a year, maybe, maybe once every other year at this stage. Um, so it doesn't seem like it's a, you know, it's, it's a, a place a sort of uh, bursting with uh, developer activity which is a little bit of a shame. However, again, it kind of got me thinking about our information diet in a wider capacity. And let me give, get to um, let me get to some recommended reading because this is, uh, this is good. Uh, this is a book by a guy called Dave Gorman. Some of you in the UK might be uh, already familiar with him. Uh, he's a bit of a... I'm going to use the word stand-up comic, but he does very nerdy sort of uh, comedy. Um, and he this book, Too Much Information... Uh, I picked it up in an airport on the way to a holiday, and uh, it's really good, actually. It's kind of like a blog post in a book um, where he just sort of monologues about how there is so much information in our lives that are, you know, where is, you know, that we process it and then never use it, and um, how we sort of often overload our brain with all this useless information and advertising and all this kind of stuff that how, you know, how much quality information is going to slip through the cracks. Um, and that, you know, maybe it's a worthwhile lifetime pursuit to seek out quality information rather than just try and analyse as much 
um, you know, data as possible, or, 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 or put our eyes on as much data as possible, thinking that, you know, all of it is making us enriched people when it probably isn't. It's probably no different than than sitting in front of a, a TV. So, um, and another actually book that I want to recommend to you is this. It's Tim Timothy Ferris's Four Hour Work Week. When I started out my business, I got recommended this book quite quickly, and it turned my business from a grind into something that I really enjoy doing. Um, Basically, it's a book about workflow. It's a book about how to minimize your work week by using lots of different tools, most of which are online tools, to um, to sort of expedite your various uh, work processes. But he also talks about like a lot of lifestyle decisions, like your information diet and how much information um, it you know it's it's healthy to uh, to take in. And he makes a point of reading like hardly any newspapers and actually having a very, very light information diet, checking his email once a week, um, not going to meetings that don't have a scheduled end time and an explicit goal and all this kind of stuff. He's got some great time-saving tips in this book, but the, basically the book is cover to cover time-saving tips, but like um, it's a bit more than tips. It's like processes or exercises that you need to do or... Um, uh, you know, or, or sort of big changes that you need to make in your life, or sometimes not so big changes. But a lot of it is focused around um, the uh, the quality of the information that you, that you sort of allow into your day to day life, um, and and not being com- sort of not allowing the sort of the up to the minute information world to allow you to be compulsive. So that doesn't you know that means not checking your feeds every five minutes or whenever you're bored. It, it, you know, and it means like sort of not checking the news every single day to see you know all this stuff that's happening because a lot of this information it sort of. It, it it generally sort of doesn't affect us or it is information that we can't act upon um, and, and in a lot of cases is completely inconsequential to us and thus it's information that we have that we feel is important that we can't act on or has no impact on us or very little impact on us that we can't change. It's, you know, so it's, it raises some very uh, interesting questions about the, the what types of media, what types of information that we should, we should be taking on board as people, because the brain presumably can only take on board so much information. We are not, you know, sort of uh, we're, we're not we're not as good at remembering stuff as computers, as it were. So, you know, whereas we might not have the hard disk storage, um, it might then make um, more sense to make better use of CPU and RAM. So. Um, I'd really like to hear how you guys sort of handle things like this. Uh, do you guys have an RSS uh, reader with all of your, you know, your, like your daily newspapers and various websites all lined up? Do you just use it for podcasting? Do you not use it at all? Um, if you want to check out the news, do you just go straight to the website? Do you get their app on your phone? Um, and I'm genuinely interested in, 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 in this because it seems to be a very diverse way of, of how we experience our, our lives in the digital age is that everyone seems to have their own regimen of, of how they take in information. And, and there seems to be more diversity on this issue than there is in, in, in most other aspects. And it's, it's interesting that although as sort of like universal RSS is, how few people take it on board. And there's probably like a PR marketing reason for that. Um, but RSS even has its pretty, you know, a pretty good eye-catching logo in that regards. But um, yeah, like it's kind of got me thinking now that we don't sort of, there isn't like a wealth of RSS readers um, out on the desktop scene at least. And it doesn't seem like there is this like enthusiasm from the developer community to to make more or better ones or newer ones or anything like that. And that our current solutions are, um, are, are fine as they are. And of course, social media plays a huge role in this as well. Um, I mean, how many articles have I read through the RSS reader, of course, about how you know, endless uh, Twitter feeds and Facebook feeds uh, are, are just sort of draining away our mental energy. Uh, again, giving us all this amount of, of relatively useless information to process, uh, while either good information can slip through the cracks or us basically devaluing information that comes across our screens because there's just so much of it that's that's useless. And, you know, a lot of it reinforces the compulsion to keep checking it as well to always make sure we have up to the minute information rather than just um you know reviewing uh, a spread of information either at the end of the day or at the end of the week i mean timothy ferris checks his email once a week so um you know i find that really quite fascinating and interesting about him that uh, that he's managed to sort of slow down his his um his workflow pace just that much but um but it seems to be sort of a direction that that i'd like to you know it seems to be a place that i'd like to be in as well really 
Um, and I think there is a lot of this compulsiveness around everything from RSS feeds to Twitter feeds, Facebook feeds, and I often find that I update my YouTube subscription inbox a little more often than I perhaps might like to admit. But I would like to hear your thoughts on this one because it's a really diverse topic. I mean, that's, you know, the information diet sort of alludes to the fact that everyone has their own intake of information. And, um, and I'd like to hear sort of like how you guys sort of take it all on board. I mean, with me, I have removed a lot of social media out of my life over the past few years. And it tends to be, you know, and, and what survived is the stuff that I genuinely use and genuinely feel engaged in. Um, and you know, I think a lot of it has to do with context and, you know, sort of like um, a lot of external factors. For example, with Mastodon, I love Mastodon because it's like not a serious piece of of um, tech in my life as it were it's not a serious part of my life I can just sort of go on and uh, share sh share some links and join in some jokes and all that kind of stuff and you know it's 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 great fun and and nothing really becomes of it um, but then of course on the other side like with RSS um, my RSS feed is it's, it's like it's quite serious in terms of the information that it presents it's got a lot of websites on there a lot of news and I gotta say, I do feel like it's taking some kind of toll on maybe sort of my attention span or my sort of enjoyment of, of spending time on the internet or even the, sort of having an impact on the quality of information that, that I'm taking on board. So I think I, I've got to give that some uh, some personal thought there. But yeah, like I said, I'd like to hear what you guys have to say on this because it is a pretty diverse topic. So let me know down in the comments section below. Thanks, as always, for joining me. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.